Hi, I'm Cabot Jennings, the Salt Lake City Streets Director. Uh, welcome to our Facebook Live Salt Lake City Surface Treatment presentation. I am here with Kyle and Tyler, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Hey everyone, I'm Kyle Irvin. I'm the GIS and Communications Coordinator here at the Salt Lake City Streets Division. I make maps to support the Streets Division operations. Uh, I maintain the Streets Division website, My Street, and I also support the Streets Division Notifications Program. Uh, I'll be talking about the My Street website a little bit later in the presentation. Tyler? Hello, my name's Tyler Harvey. I'm the Surface Treatment Program <laughs> Manager here at the Street Center. Great. Um, we're here to uh, discuss surface treatment, but Streets has multiple work groups. Um, we also have asphalt maintenance, signs, roads, uh, roadway markings, traffic signals, street sweeping, concrete 50-50, uh, after an after hours response team and we do snow and ice control. Um, streets uh, surface treatment works with all of these all of these groups in order to accomplish their missions. So um, it, it's all part of one team. Um, we, we also coordinate with our engineering department and transportation department uh, uh, to select our roads and, and coordinate special projects and and uh, other roadway uh, projects. Um, pavement preservation is a cost-effective and greener approach to getting the most life out of our roads and uh, in making the taxpayer payer dollars go, go further. Uh, in addition to cost efficiency and um, uh, preservation, it also consumes less energy uh, to do a surface treatment than a, a full roadway reconstruction. So it, it's a great green uh, application. Um, it, it's a faster application. Uh, we can we can do surface treatments in a day or two, as opposed to a, a full roadway reconstruction. Um, Salt Lake City Streets is working to create what we call perpetual pavements um, that can last up to 40 years uh, when the if if it's installed correctly and maintained on a regular basis. Um, Salt Lake City has been doing limited surface treatments for for many years, and in 2018 was funded to double the lane miles um, to, uh, in, in surface treatments. Uh, selecting roadways in good condition uh, allows us to get the, the most effective and best results. So sometimes you'll see roads in poor condition that you would think we could do a surface treatment on, but we really can't because it doesn't warrant that kind of treatment and we won't get as much life out of the road as we would have hoped. So we're really looking for roads that are in, in, in better condition and they benefit the most and, and get the most life extension out of these treatments. Um, when the road is in too poor of a condition for a surface treatment, engineering will, will uh, uh, submit it for a, a reconstruction or, or a mill and fill. Um, some of our challenge with, sur with surface treatments are, are weather related. Uh, we got to have temperatures above 50 degrees and rising. We can't have any rain in the forecast. Um, we have to have the right roadway candidates, and uh, you know, quite often our, our equipment can break down, and, and that'll that'll set us back. So, and, and this year, especially with the pandemic and, and COVID-19, um, we've had we have to be practicing social distancing. You know, only one person in a truck. We have to have our PPE on on the job site, so that that slows us down a little bit. Um, on another note, at the end of this uh, Facebook live stream, uh, we'll be answering the, the questions after the presentation. So, at this point, I'll, I'll turn it over to Tyler Harvey, and he's got a, a presentation on the different surface treatments. Again, thank you for joining us. Um, I'd like to share some information about the preventative maintenance programs we perform here at the streets department. Our crews perform repairs and surface treatments on 1,672 lane miles of city-owned asphalt roadways. For those of you who are unfamiliar with what a lane mile is, uh, it's the measurement of a 12-foot wide pass that is 5,280 feet long, a mile long. Um, and the different types of treatments and maintenance we perform are chip seal, slurry seal, inlays, crack seal, level patching, pothole repair, surface milling, 
And then the type of surface treatment each road will receive depends on the condition of the road, as Cabot was saying. So with input from engineering department and our field evaluations from our surface treatment team, we select 155 lane miles each year. <clears throat> each road that is constructed has a lifespan. And from the day of construction, a road will begin to degrade over time. Over the first 75% of a road's life, it will drop 40% in quality. And over the next 12%, it will drop another 40% in quality. So preventative maintenance will slow the degradation of the road. And surface treatments are faster, cheaper, and environmentally friendly. More friendly than the, just a full reconstruction. And the better the condition of the road, the longer life extension you will get out of the surface treatment. <clears throat> Spark funding our future, a portion of a new sales tax revenue assigned to our streets maintenance budget was used to add an additional surface treatment team. <clears throat> the addition of another crew allows us to perform both chip seal and slurry seal throughout the season. And this is what allows us to maintain more lane miles on an annual basis. And there are many factors that take place in selecting streets that receive surface treatments, and we'll go into some of those now. <clears throat> In 2016 and 17, a pavement study was conducted. Uh, Van equipped with a set of tools to rate the existing pavement, drove every street in Salt Lake City and collected data. From this collected data, an overall condition index, which we call an OCI, a score was assigned to each to all Salt Lake City maintained streets. We use these OCIs obtained from the study to generate candidates and make our selection for surface treatments. As you can see in this, um, most of the roads are in the poor, poor to fair range after this study. And in addition to our surface treatment crews, <clears throat> we have two asphalt maintenance crews that perform maintenance on the selected candidates. This maintenance takes place prior to receiving the surface treatment. And the goal of prepping a road prior to a surface treatment will have is to raise the OCI of the road so that the treatment will have a greater impact on prolonging the life of the road. So our prep work involves crack sealing, which is mainly done during winter, the fall and winter, um, level patching, and fill potholes, and replace missing asphalt. And these crews work year round prepping our surface treatment roads and while also addressing maintenance requests such as potholes, and they also assist our concrete crew with the 50-50 with the program. And the pavement management program we use is called Cartograph. And what this program does is it allows us to track the OCIs, update roadway conditions when prep work is done, and coordinate road preparation with our district crews. And we use this program to generate the candidates. Each segment is ran through a set of filters that filter out OCI conditions, upcoming projects, length of time between, treat, between treatments. And here's a map of the current surface treatment projects happening right now. Uh, we are halfway through this season, which typically begins in May and runs into September, depending on weather and temperature. And a lot of these roads have already been completed. And I want to talk about the three different surface treatment programs that we perform here. Um, we break them up into lane miles. <clears throat> so our goal each year is to apply surface treatments to 155 lane miles. Um, to achieve this goal, we need to divide these lane miles up between slurry seal, chip seal, and inways. And there are factors that play a role play a role in how these lane miles are divided, such as cost effect and effectiveness, road conditions, the type of a road, also weather and temperature. And as you can see on the graph, we do 100 lane miles of slurry, 50 lane miles of chip seal, and five lane miles of inlays each year. That's our goal for a perfect season. <clears throat> 
And just to put it in perspective, in a typical summer, the surf, our teams will apply enough surface treatments to cover over 200 NFL football fields. I want to talk a little about about going depth about chip seal. Um, I'm going to show some videos. Chip seal is a single layer, single layer of asphalt emulsion, as you can see. It's covered by then it's covered by a single layer of aggregate. Then we then use uh, pneumatic rollers to embed those chips into that emulsion. <clears throat> and uh, chip seal's primary purpose is to seal the road and prevent water intrusion. And the aggregate also protects the asphalt while providing skid, skid resistance. And after a road is chip sealed, we will sweep up any loose chips. And then we'll apply a fog seal. You'll see a fog seal in, in this video. And what a fog seal is, is it's a light application of emulsified asphalt. What that does, it, it improves the appearance of the road while also improving safety by enhancing the color contrast between pavement markings. And you'll see that in this clip also. The chip seal operation, we, it usually takes us around two to three days to go through all these phases. Yeah, you can see that the color of the chip is really light without the fog seal. <clears throat> we'll, we'll we'll spend a days we'll spend a day sweeping up all loose chips. As, as you can see, we're blowing out all the gutters, getting just collecting all that loose gravel. And what fog seal is, the oil is, it's a, it's a CSS oil that's diluted with water. How long does that take to dry? Uh, Fox, it'll, it, it'll take around one to two hours to dry, depending on, on wind, depending on temperature. But two hours could be safe. So it's a pretty fast process. Yes, it is. Like I was saying with the contrast between the black pavement and the paint markings that makes those really pop out. Okay, our next one I want to talk about is slurry seal. <clears throat> slurry seal is a mixture of water, asphalt emulsion, aggregate, and additive. We have these specialized equipment that mixes all those materials, and then we spread it evenly over the, over the street, as you can see. And slurry seal's main purpose is to correct moderate to severe raveling, uh, protect the asphalt from oxidation, improve the contrast between street markings, just like fog seal and it prevents water intrusion, and it also provides curb appeal. And a slurry seal will take us one to two days, depending on the location and the type of road, if we need to leave accesses for businesses. So we never restrict access to businesses during our programs. Does that slurry seal harden with time? We've got a question from Dave on Facebook. 
Uh, yes, it, it will harden in with time. And our, the slurry seal, once laid, it will harden within, uh, it will cure and we can open the road within three to five hours, but in time it will harden. Okay, and inlays. Um, an inlay is when we remove and replace around two inches of a road that has either failed or is in too bad a shape to receive, to receive a surface treatment. And inlays are a way of improving the condition of a road. So uh, the surface treatment, we can put a surface treatment on it. And of the 155 lane miles selected each year, about 15% of those require an inlay. These, this is what we determine when we do our field evaluations of how big of an inlay. We try and stick around at most 20% of a segment. All right, um, there are multiple notifica notification steps we take uh, to ensure that residents and businesses are for surface treatment on their street. So when candidates are selected and evaluated for surface treatments, um, each resident and business will receive an advanced notification. They're usually handed out one to two months prior to the treatment. And what this advance is going to explain, it'll explain what type of treatment that road's going to receive, whether a slurry or a chip seal. And then it'll have some instructions to prepare for the treatment. And we do encourage residents or businesses to contact us after receiving this, if they need access to the street on a certain day, say they have a doctor's appointment or they're moving or they have a waste container on the street, we can work around those dates. And then these flyers will also have our contact information and as well as a QR code to our website. So you just scan that code and it'll take you right to our website. And then one day, one business day uh, before the application of the treatment, another round of flyers will be delivered um, to each business and resident with further instructions as well as the contact information again. And then if a surface treatment is postponed due to weather or equipment breakdowns, uh, another notice will come out and give you a future date. So uh, one day prior to the treatment, uh, our no, we put no parking signs out on, uh, on, the, on the street. And if a vehicle is parked in the construction zone and the owner cannot be contacted, uh, we, the vehicle will be relocated to the nearest side street. And then uh, SLCPD will be contacted with the address where the vehicle was parked. And we also have the address where it SLCPD and we can give you the exact address. Um, due to COVID-19, uh, we are suspending going door to door on the day of the treatment to give residents another chance to move their vehicles out of their driveways and out of the construction zone. We just wanna keep everyone safe and keep our distance. So I wanna talk about some of the challenges we face um, that these challenges do result in lost lane miles each year. I'll show you some calendars. Um, equipment issues are one of them. So here's a calendar of some equipment issues last season. This is in July of 2019. So you can see the green boxes are the days where we had no issues. We both, both uh, programs ran. The yellow boxes are days where equipment issue affected at least one program and resulted in lost lane miles. And the red boxes are where equipment issues totally shut us down and we weren't able to get any lane miles those days. And in July, we lost around seven lane miles that month. And in uh, for next year, an additional slurry truck is gonna be added to our fleet. So that's going to help alleviate some of these issues. 
at least on the slurry end. You know, weather can also play a big factor. Um, multiple lane miles can be lost if it is a really wet month. Uh, in August, we had some weather issues uh, and some equipment. So we lost around five lane miles in the month of August of last year. That just kind of shows us some of the challenges between equipment and weather that we face. And we also, Another challenge is planning our treatments around waste and recycling areas <clears throat> um, to make these operations as convenient as we can. We avoid doing our surface treatments on the days of waste and recycling whenever possible. Um, we plan our treatments throughout the whole city so we can avoid these collection days. If we do have to do a street on a collection day, uh, we will coordinate with our sustainability and they can come and get the cans before we start the treatment. I want to go over what we accomplished, a little bit of what we accomplished last season. Um, here's a map of what was accomplished last season, which ran from May 13th through September 4th. And we were able to apply roughly 133 lane miles throughout all of Salt Lake City. And this affected around 7,200 7, households and around 1,200 businesses. So as you can see, we were pretty spread out all over the city. And just each year, um, our service treatment team uses their knowledge, skill, and experience to conduct the best management practices resulting in safer and longer lasting roads. And these practices positively affect our residents and businesses and visitors of Salt Lake City. Um, I'm going I will now hand it over to Kyle and he will tell you a little bit about my street webpage. Thanks, Tyler. That was great. Um, once again, I'll do a quick introduction. I'm Kyle Irvin. I'm the GIS and communication coordinator. I make maps for streets division operations and I also help run the my street website, which is what I'm talking about today. Uh, the URL you can go to is slc.gov slash mystreet. Once again, that's slc.gov slash mystreet. Um, this is a collaborative page between the Salt Lake City Streets Division, Transportation, and Engineering. There are a bunch of great resources on this page. Um, so whether you're looking to report a pothole or graffiti, find out who's doing construction on your street, or learn more about the services that we offer, um, it's a great resource. Let's see. Speaking of services, uh, if you click into the services tab, you'll find more information about all the services we offer, concrete replacement, roadway markings, traffic signs and signals, snow removal, street sweeping, road reconstruction and repair. And then at the bottom, you can also find a pavement condition map. Uh, here you can see the condition of the street you live on or any other city maintained street in Salt Lake City. This map was created using the data from the 2017 pavement study that Tyler mentioned earlier. Uh, it's interactive. It's kind of cool. You can turn off different layers, type in an address to the, see the con condition of your street or any street that you're concerned about. Um, if we go back to the My Street main page and you scroll down a little bit further, you'll get to the current street surface treatments. Yes, current street surface treatment segment. Um, all of these projects are in collaboration with the transportation department. Uh, they highlight roads that may be receiving some sort of street design change or enhancement, such as new crosswalks or painted bike lanes. Uh, on the individual project pages, you can find data, from transportation surveys, uh, and other community input that help guide uh, future street design. You can also find project timelines and points of contact for questions or concerns about these projects. In the upper left hand corner, you'll find a map of the 2020 surface treatment schedule, which I'll go into now. This is another interactive map. Um, the chip seal projects are highlighted in red and the slurry seal projects are blue. You can again type in your home address or any address you're concerned about uh, to see if streets will be sealing your street this summer. Um, like Tyler mentioned earlier, this, the subject is scheduled to change because of equipment and weather delays. Um, we'll be adding the 21, 
the 2021 construction season surface treatment schedule to the My Street page when it's finalized. And that is a brief summary of most of the information we have on the My Street page. Uh, I hope you check it out and find it, if you find it useful, um, let us know and let us know if there's any changes you'd like to see on the site as well. And I think that concludes the presentation part of this live stream. Um, you can contact us at that phone number down there, uh, 801-535-2345, or at our email address at mystreet at slcgov.com. Once again, that's 801-535-2345, or our email address at mystreet at slcgov.com. So we are now get into, let me stop sharing my screen real quick. Now get into questions from the Facebook Live. Uh, the second one we have also from Dave on Facebook. Which streets will get new and improved bike lanes? Will 2100 South get lanes as it's supposed to? That is a, Cabot, do you want to expand on that or do you want to? Yeah, I can, I can help with that. Uh, one of the things we do prior to each season, actually a couple of years out, is we work with the Department of Transportation um to let them know what our roadway candidates are and um, that allows them enough time to decide whether they want to put bike lanes on the road or if they want to put in uh you know sh share the lane markings and any striping changes so that's a function of transportation and uh and their crew up there uh becca rolf is is one of the bike coordinators up there that we work with um Oh, year round, and she would be a better person to ask which streets will be um, getting improved bike lanes. And that's the, our Department of Transportation at 801-535-6630. So um, we, we get our, our information from them and then um, we'll pass that on to our paint crews and they'll, they'll have a, a striping diagram that after the surface treatment comes through, we, we, we make the striping changes. Uh, Question three from the F, uh, the Facebook: How many streets will Salt Lake City fix this year? Do you want to answer that one, Tyler? Like I mentioned uh, earlier, we plan on one hundred and fifty-five lane miles uh, segments. So far, it's July. We're up to around sixty-five lane miles as of right now. Our goal is one fifty-five. Uh, question four, how are streets projects selected? Like I mentioned uh, in the presentation, we use our card graph and the OCIs from the study to select our streets. And then I'd like to add to that that on street selections, um, you'll sometimes see a road that you think, wow, they really should have been on my street. and put a, a slurry seal down or, or a chip seal. But in, in reality, some of the roads in, in the city are just uh, too poor of a conditions for this treatment. One, to be effective and, and two, to add any longevity to the road. Um, these treatments are really effective when the roads are in better, uh, good or fair condition. And there's been a lot of data that's been done showing that uh, it, the best time to do a surface treatment is within the first two, you know, first first two years of the roadway, it, it, al it almost like puts a veneer over the roadway and preserves that street. And that's that's our ultimate goal to get to, is to get to these 40 year roadway lives where, where we come back every uh, 10 years and, and, put, and put another surface treatment on it. So go ahead, Kyle. Uh, there's another question. Um, how is Salt Lake City being proactive in maintaining streets, especially during this COVID challenge? Maybe you want to talk about that, Cabot, about uh, how streets operations have been affected by COVID? Yeah, COVID was a big challenge for us. We had to shut down for a week or two, and then we, we came back with some, some limited um, uh, maintenance work, and then we came back into full operations about a month. But we had to figure out how to, how to get our crews into the building um and, and you know we we started just meeting outside and staging our crews over the course of two hours 
bring a group in every 15 minutes. Um, yeah, we, we've had to use PPE, masks, disinfectants, uh, sanitizers, and then uh, we're only allowing one person per vehicle right now. Um, so sometimes you'll see, you'll wonder why there's that many large trucks on a job site um, because we can't put, you know, four people in a crew cab right now. So it's been a challenge. We've worked through it. Um, we've identified where we can socially distance. And, uh, but in most cases, you'll see, you'll see uh, masks on people and, and, and protective gear. So um, it slowed us down a little bit, but I, I think the, the crews have, have been really great in um, adopting uh, the safety protocols that need to keep everybody safe and still be productive and, and get our jobs done. Yeah, I think we were, we were a little lucky that when there was so much uncertainty those early days in March where no one knew what was going to happen and we did have to shut down, that happened when it was just the beginning of this. I don't even know if we'd started the surface treatments. That I think we were pretty lucky with the timing of that and we didn't lose too much production. That was nice. Um, another question. Let's see. What's the difference between street maintenance and street reconstruction? I know that SLC Gov did, the engineering division did a Facebook Live about street reconstruction just a few weeks ago, I believe. Um, does someone want to take that question? Yeah, uh, there's actually kind of three different things you can do there. Um, the, the, the lightest and, and cheapest and, and, and greenest impact is, is what we do with the surface treatment. Um, you know, it, it's fast, it, it doesn't have a lot of impact. Um, but we, when the roads start to fall to a point that they, uh, a surface treatment is no longer effective, then, then we do what we call a, a mill and fill. That's where they go in and mill the roadway off a, a couple, couple, three inches, and then they'll come in and put uh, fresh asphalt over that. And uh, the, the final category is if the road's in, in bad enough shape that the sub base, uh, the material under the asphalt, has deteriorated, um, then they'll come in and, and do what they call a, a full depth reclamation. Um, and that, that's a reconstruction where, you know, they may do uh, curb and gutter. Uh, they'll, they'll grind the whole roadway up and uh, sub base to it and then compact everything and then do a whole new asphalt overlay. So th those are kind of the, the three different tools that Salt Lake City uses. Someone else asked, will my street be fixed this season? Can you add my street to the list? Um, we have that surface treatment map that I have on the My Street website that you can go and see uh, what roads will be receiving a chip seal or a slurry seal this summer. Um, in terms of adding uh, a resident street to the list, does someone else want to expand on that? I'll expand on that. Um, we do a lot of prep work throughout the year to get these streets ready for a surface treatment. So it's, we really can't just add a street to the list because these are all planned out and we have all of our prep work. So we can definitely take a look at your street and run it through our cartograph software and we can give you an answer there. One more question. Uh, can you talk more about outreach process and notifying residents about projects? One resident said they only got one day notice. How far in advance will you do this and how will you notify residents? Well, typically we try to send out our first advance notice uh, roughly six to eight weeks before the surface treatment on your street. And then there'll be another 24 hour notice that has more detailed instructions about what specifically you have to do uh, when the surface treatment happens. Um, so I'm sorry if you didn't get that early notice and just got the 24 hour notice. We tried to uh, notify everyone well in advance. And then uh, unfortunately with COVID, like Tyler mentioned earlier, we haven't been going door to door and knocking on people's doors uh, the morning of the surface treatment. Um, so we have to rely on that uh, 24 hour notice these days. And we, we really do ask that people follow the notices and, and plan ahead. 
Um, as one of the questions we had is, you know, getting tire marks into the slurry seals is if people drive on these treatments um, prior to the cure time, not only will it make a mess of their vehicle, but it, it will, um, you know, of course, make the the product look look a lot worse than, than what it should. And um, so please, please plan ahead um, so you're not driving on, you know, a wet or tarry surface. Tyler, this might be one for you. Um, I'm having some things delivered or major work done requiring large trucks in my yard. Uh, what day will they plan to do work on my street and can you reschedule? Some people have last minute situations that they have to deal with. We, we deal with this situation every year and we're able to, we plan our streets week by week, day by day, just because of these reasons. So, Yes, we, we can reschedule. If and we get, you'll, if you'll we shut get, down only uh, sections of streets, correct? What's that? You'll, su you'll shut down only sections of streets to allow for business access, access and things like that? Yes, yes. Okay, uh, one more question. What if I'm out of town and my car is parked on the side of the road? What will happen to it? Like I mentioned earlier, it will be relocated to the nearest street and we will have the address and SLCPD will also have the address so you can contact either one of us. What happens in situations like the avenues when there's no street parking? We won't park them in a street where there's no street parking. Okay. Well, if that's the end of the questions, I think we can start wrapping up. Are there any last remarks you want to mention, Tyler and Cabot? Yeah, I just like to talk about the surface treatment uh, program that we're always looking for better ways to do it. Uh, we picked up a, another planer this year um, that does the, the roadway edges. It's, it's a little smaller, so it allows us to get those curb tie tie ins into the roadway better prepped. Um, you can kind of think about a surface treatment a, a little bit like painting your house. Uh, the surface treatment is only as effective as as getting getting the road prepped. In, in anticipation of the surface treatment. So we, we, you know, we only spend four or five months in surface treatment during the summer. And we're spending, you know, the, the rest of the year making sure we're doing these level patching and inlays and, um, you know, making the, getting the potholes filled to try to get these roads in the best shape we can um, to extend life out of them the best we can. And as Tyler mentioned, we'll get another slurry truck for next season. Um, that will that will help tremendously with uh, in, increasing the production of the slurry sill program. And uh, right now we're looking at picking up a couple of uh, oil emulsion tankers um, that that help 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 our our programs quite a bit. So we're always trying to add equipment, uh, you know, where where it's the most benefit. And um, uh, we're always updating our contracts, looking for better products, emulsions, aggregates. Uh, it's quite a science that goes into these uh, emulsions and, and, and surface treatments. So uh, Tyler and I and Kyle and, and the whole crew, uh, we're always looking for ways to imp improve the product and, and get the most bang, bang we can for the taxpayer's dollar. Great. Well, I just wanted to remind everyone that you can still make comments on this Facebook live stream, even after it ends. We'll be around to answer more questions if you have any. Um, and we're always around on the My Street site. You're welcome to visit there uh, to learn more about the programs and use the maps. Um, you can also call us at 801-535-2345 or email us at mystreet at slcgov.com uh, with any questions or concerns you may have. So with that, I think we're going to say goodbye. Take care, everybody.